Hand loaders, bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. I appreciate everyone watching that first video, the introduction to cast bullet success. Now, in that video, I had pointed out seven different concepts that we need to go over in order to be successful with cast bullets. The first concept was we need to know the bullet path. The second concept is we need to know the correct bullet size. The third, we need to know how to come up with the correct bullet size. So folks, I have taken apart <laughs> my Ruger GP100 and 44 Special. I'm focusing on a revolver and, and the reason for that is just simply because everything an auto loader has as far as uh, internal bullet travel the revolver also has. However, the revolver has more. So if we can master and understand the revolver, how much better will we be equipped to handle our auto loaders? Or even a lot of our rifle shooting when it comes to cast bullets. Now, the first path, the first event that happens when the bullet begins its journey out of its case, the first place it's going to go to is the throat. That is the first point, and that is what we're going to address here today. I want to just show you here this throat. Of course, I got five chambers. And if you look in there, let me see if I can get a little more light in our favor. Here we go. If you look in there, you can see the throat at the end of the chamber. Now, the purpose of that throat is very simple, folks. Really, all it is, is a step-down diameter that allows the bullet to pass through the chamber completely and start its entrance into the barrel as straight as possible. Most of us that have just messed with jacketed bullets, we haven't really had to do anything with our throats or give too much thought to our throats. <clears throat> and that's fine. However, we're shooting cast bullets and now everything is different. It's different because cast bullets will highlight any imperfection, any tolerance issue, tolerance stacking, burrs, you name it. It can all become a problem with cast, but if you've been shooting jacketed bullets, you've been hunky-dory the whole time most likely. But that's not what we're doing. We're here to shoot cast bullets, folks. So let's go ahead and understand one thing about this throat. This throat is very critical for how the rest of the journey of the bullet is going to play out. That's right. We need to know that bullet fits the throat properly. Now... Lend me your eyes one moment here, and I'm going to bring you over to this fancy little illustration that I put together. Now, if you look here, this is the cylinder of the revolver, okay? We're only depicting one chamber. There might be five, there might be six, there might be seven. So what we have to note here is, once again, what I just showed you the step-down diameter of this throat. The bullet really needs to match that diameter very closely. Maybe not 100%. Close to 100% is good. What we really want is a slip fit. Because if we can get a slip fit, then we know that bullet is going to enter that barrel nice and straight. Sorry for jerking you guys around. I had to move my camera. So we need to first understand that these throats have got to match the bullet that we have chosen. Now if we choose a bullet that's too small, we're going to allow gas cutting to occur, which is going to strip lead off of our bullets. Folks, it's not that complicated. We want to keep the lead inside the bullet. We want to keep the hot gases behind the bullet. Let's not let the gases seep ahead of the bullet. 
that's when things start falling apart. So, okay, Leadsmith, very cool, we got that now. What in the world am I going to do to find out what size bullet I need? All right. First, we need to find out if the bullets you're using actually work. So, let us take a look here. If this bullet that I have selected here is a good fit, then it should take a little bit of work to push it through the throat. I shouldn't have to necessarily hammer it through, but it shouldn't fall through either. Let's watch what happens. We'll select throat number one. If you can see my little sharpie writing. Throat number one, here we go. Whoops. What was that, folks? That's a bullet hitting the floor. All right, let's move along to throat number two. We'll go over the table this time. It really hurts when these 250 grain bullets hit your toe. All right, well, okay, that's not good. I'm starting to feel like this bullet's a little bit too small. And see, this is something simple that you can check yourself. You can right now pause this video, open up, ooh, that one stopped. Let's see. We might be close on this one unless I boogered it up when I dropped it. Very well could have happened. I'll push it through with a pin. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I must have buggered it up when it hit the ground. Let's throw it in number five. Let's see what happens here. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do, yeah, I dented this bullet. Not a problem. You guys get the idea. It lead dents real easy. It's not hard. Even with hard lead, it's, it, it dents. Hard lead is still pretty soft for being called a metal. So let's not get too wrapped up around hardness. At least not right now. So I need to know what my diameters are. My internal diameters. I have here this little bag of cast lead around balls that I cast probably about two years ago. And I always like to keep some handy for these purposes. I always check out the measurements of my revolvers and such. Not just revolvers, my anything that needs measuring. If I can use one of these lead slugs, I'll do it. So, as you've seen already, I've got my numbers on here so I can take a record of what each one is. I'm going to swage this ball, or one of these balls, into each of these throats. And I'm going to use this vise right here to do it. All right. No one get too excited. When you see my vise, you'll notice it's orange and blue. It has absolutely nothing to do with anything football or sports related or college related whatsoever. It just happens to be an orange vise. And the soft jaw that I'm using happens to be blue. Don't read into it, folks. We're about cast bullets here. So... When I swage this little ball right through the throat, it's going to come out, it ought to come out, the exact diameter. And just to show you right now, it's starting its life off at 455 thousandths of an inch. Some of you cap and ball shooters might already know that. I'm probably not going to run all of them here on camera. I'll probably do one, maybe two, just so that you can see what's happening here. Use soft jaws, guys. Think about what you're doing. There's no reason you should be scratching up or beating up your firearm just by taking measurements. So I got one soft jaw in, and I'm pressing... The lead round ball in through the unprotected side. Now, if you can see what's happening here, I'm gonna see if I can get us a closer shot. With a little bit more light, possibly. Come on, light. We got light. 
we got a little bit of light. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Now we have some light. Oh, this technical stuff. Okay. You can see the ball right here. And notice that, again, the soft jaw here. I'm going to just gently bring the device jaws together, which will swage that little lead ball right into the cylinder. Now, once it goes in, folks, there's no reason to just keep pushing it in because you don't want to mar up your cylinder on these jaws. We'll back it up so you can see what we got now. Okay. That's actually a pretty good capture right there. I like that. Now, some of you Captain Ball shooters know exactly what we're dealing with right here. Got ourselves a little lead ring. That pretty much reassures us that, you know, it's not relevant to this, but if you shoot Captain Ball re revolvers, and it means that it is a good fit. So, we have us a good fit. Okay, so I don't need to do anything real extreme to push it the rest of the way through. I'm using a brass punch right now just to push it on through. And notice I captured my little lead ring right here. And here is that final shiny little ball. Now it's just time to measure. So let us see what cylinder throat number one measures at. And what it looks like here, folks, is we are right about 432 thousandths of an inch. Are there more accurate ways to do this? Yes. Is caliper the best thing to use? Well, a micrometer would probably be better, but how much accuracy do we need? This works very well. And I can go ahead and log down that number one is 432 thousandths of an inch. So, I don't know exactly what the rest of them are going to come out as. However, I'm going to show you in this next video what our results are. So, stick with me, like, subscribe, and you're going to see the rest shortly. Thank you.